Hello, good evening friends, welcome to INICET November 23 recall session by Prep Ladder. I am Dr. Jambakeshwaran, our Prep Ladder Orthopedic Faculty for you. Uh, happy news is that and uh, all the questions that have been asked today, you know, all of us there are in our main recording and our YouTube session. Okay, so in that way, I, when I found the question, I was feeling very happy and I have no doubt, dear guys and girls, you have done it really very well. We'll go on to the questions. A patient presented in the OPD with chief complaints of unable to evert the ankle. Okay, unable to evert the ankle. The following deformity is seen. The following deformity is seen. You may, what deformity you are able to see? I am able to see an equinus deformity at the ankle. I am able to see an equinus deformity at the ankle. Which of the following eight is present? So, patient is not able to evert the foot. Patient is having equinus at the ankle. So, this is a classically a case of foot drop. There is no doubt. This is a case of foot drop. Most probably, this should be due to common perineal nerve injury. So, what is the classical gait in a foot drop? Everyone knows the right answer. Here, this, the choice is given a stepping gait. The correct answer it is high stepping gait. Okay, that should be the answer. High stepping gait, that should be the answer. And side by side, we should know for the future, we should know waddling gait means. This is otherwise called duck waddling gait. Duck waddling gait is otherwise called sailor's gait. And this is common in bilateral developmental dysplasia hip. Especially it should be bilateral. Okay. In bilateral DDH, the classical gait is called waddling gait. The full name is duck waddling gait. Otherwise called sailor's gait. Coming to the third option, circumduction gait. Mostly in a medical condition, patient will walk like this, circumduction gait. This is called circumduction gait. This seen in hemiparesis. Okay, hemiparesis. Right, so the answer here is high stepping gait. Okay, so what are the points we should recall in uh, uh, foot drop? Common cause, causes of common perineal nerve injury. It is because it winds around the neck of the fibula. So, neck of the fibula fracture is the most common cause. Inappropriate tight bandaging around the knee joint, the neck of the fibula, especially by native traditional bone setters, that is a very important practical cause. Hip dislocation is an important cause for foot drop. Knee dislocation is an important cause for foot drop. And proximal tibia fracture. Again, directly, usually it won't compress the nerve. Many a times this is due to compartmental syndrome. Okay, compartmental syndrome. Right. So, foot drop. These are the important causes for foot drop. How we are going to manage clinical evaluation. Everyone knows, see the diagram. Foot drop will be there. High stepping gait will be there. Unable to evert the ankle. Apart from that, on, say, on testing the sensation. Decreased sensation in the dorsum of the foot and outer part of the leg, dorsum of the foot and outer part of the leg. So, these are the clinical manifestations, how we are managed, how we are, how we can manage a case of any foot drop. Just wait and watch policy, you have to give splints, do physiotherapy, if no recovery even after 12 months, this is the golden rule. Tendon nerve repair, uh, you are, you are doing a nerve repair and uh, there is no recovery after 12 months, okay, right. Tendon transfer is the only option. The common tendon transfer they are asked repeatedly in the exam is tibialis posterior tendon transfer. Very, very commonly used tibialis posterior tendon transfer. This is done by two methods. One is called bar technique. This is called B-A-R-R, -R, bar technique. This is tibialis posterior tendon is taken through the interosseous space and connected. If you take it to circumtibial root, that's called Ober's technique. Okay, practically, the, the, which is superior, it's a PG level, MS ortho level thing. But I am telling you in one line, bar, this is very practically used, okay, interosseous bar, okay. So, TBL is supposed to tendon transfer. The next tendon transfer is a dual tendon transfer, double tendon transfer, dual tendon transfer, uh, two tendons, one, here TBL is posterior used, another is flexor digitorum longus tendon. So, 
tendon transfer can be done by this this is one question okay we'll move on to the next question a patient presents with tear many times discussed question in our youtube session as well as in our main recording okay because i am I, I even in the initial recall inict recall which we did last month no i insisted on this point definitely we can expect this okay just you go to the you go back to the youtube and see so this is the next question they are asked this year because this is such a practical thing every year repeated question dear friends okay very simple a patient presents with tear in the anterior inferior aspect of the glenoid capsule and the labrum glenoid capsule antero inferior this is the key aspect of the glenoid lay capsule and the labrum what is the lesion that's the question they had are given bancards hill sacs both of the osteolytic lesion soft tissue lesion is bancards bony lesion is hill sacs several times we had discussed this already okay so the right answer is bancards lesion okay right i had given you a mnemonic also just go to the youtube and just see i will i will tell this again what is bancards lesion bancards lesion is damage in the capsule and the glenoid labrum in antero inferior aspect antero inferior aspect okay so in antero inferior aspect when you have a defect it is called bancards lesion that's why i used to give a, a mnemonic no b stands for bancards so boy okay that is a mnemonic which i taught uh, already boy bancards lesion antero inferior aspect of the glenoid capsule and the labrum it's a soft tissue lesion this can be diagnosed by mri hill sacs lesion is a bony lesion look at the real autopsy finding you are able to see a dimple a depression here okay where postero lateral aspect of head of the humerus postero lateral aspect of the head of the humerus this in olden books in apply they use as a word hatchet deformity this hill sacs lesion is other is called hatchet deformity which is a bony depression which is seen a depressed fracture like thing which is seen in the postero lateral aspect of the head of the humerus so that i used to give the mnemonic hpl very famous computer company name hewlett packard limited so i used to give this as a mnemonic for you hill sacs postero lateral hpl by bancards antero inferior again dear friends the same question will come in neat pg also i am telling you such a such a practical thing very very important thing okay the same diagram just i had i had shown uh, the same diagram in our uh, inicet or uh, last resort revision lrr just watch the video okay so i'm same thing so the answer is bancards you should know what is terrible triad of shoulder terrible triad of shoulder terrible triad terrible triad of uh, terrible triad of shoulder okay terrible triad of shoulder is bancards lesion plus hill sacs lesion plus erosion of the anterior glenoid rim this is the textbook description so we should know terrible triad is bancards lesion plus hill sacs lesion plus erosion of the anterior glenoid rim what is the significance when you have a bancards lesion hill sacs lesion erosion of the anterior glenoid rim or all of the three what is the significance the significance is when a, a, when an anterior shoulder dislocation patient has this they are prone for they are prone mean not prone actually really they will go for recurrent dislocation shoulder that is the recurrent dislocation shoulder that is the significance of this okay we will move on to the next question three bony points are maintained in which fracture that's the question they had given elbow dislocation supracondylar fracture intracondylar fracture both b and c three bony points are maintained only in supracondylar fracture several times this again a repeat question in recall just i had shown i took extensively the supracondylar fracture how to differentiate supracondylar fracture from elbow dislocation slides are there just watch the youtube the same thing three bony points are are well maintained only in supracondylar fracture in intercondylar fracture also what happens the isosceles triangle is not maintained the base distance will come down the base distance is decreased in intercondylar fracture after what happens after union or malunion the intercondylar distance will be more okay so intercondylar distance 
the, the, in the intracondylar fracture, the base of the isosceles triangle, the length is not at all maintained. In supracondylar alone, it is maintained. So, the answer is supracondylar fracture. In elbow dislocation, the triangle is 100%, it is disturbed. So, let us see here. Clinical features of the supracondylar fracture. Patient will have an S-shaped arm. When you make the baby sit down in a table, look at from the lateral side, the arm is S-shaped and there the proximal fragment will come and buttress the brachialis muscle so it will cause a dimple sign this is called a dimple sign you are able to see a dimpling in the brachial is a dimple sign a shaped on and when you palpate when you slightly flex and palpate the three bony points what are the three bony points tip of the olecranon lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle when you draw this it will give a classical isosceles triangle this will give a classical isosceles triangle and Supracondylar fracture is above this triangle. So, supracondylar fracture is happening above medial and lateral epicondyle. So, it will not disturb this isosceles or equilateral triangle. If it is an elbow dislocation, everything is an elbow dislocation. This triangle is not maintained, it is altered. If it is intracondylar fracture, also the triangle is not maintained, it is altered. Okay. So, that completes the discussion of our. INICT recall the questions uh, the, the authenticated questions so I hope all of you would have done all the three questions excellently all the best dear guys thank you so much